All right, what's happening? Welcome and welcome back. If you've been here before, Amp Capo, Black Adonis Games. We are going to be inside of Game Animation Sample Project for Unreal Engine 5.5. We are going to be doing the AI Follow Tutorial, which has changed just a little bit for Unreal Engine 5.5. We're going to go ahead and get right into this. Now, first, I just wanted to show you mine working. All right. So there we have it. And I can sprint away here, climb up, and there you go. All right, so basically the AI follows, traverses, does everything. So there we go. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we are going to go ahead and get into this tutorial. We're gonna go ahead and you're gonna just open your sandbox character, which is here. And you're gonna type update and you want to go to update rotation pre cmc as that is one of the new additions as they added this pre cmc tick component so let's go ahead and inside of here this is a little different from 5.4 what you're going to want to do is we want to go to this character input state and you want to make both of these instance editable and we want it to be exposed on spawn if you want it to be exposed on spawn don't change anything else just change these two options tick them on and then we don't really need to use this character anymore for now so we're going to go ahead and close this character let's go ahead and right click on our sandbox character and we're going to create a child blueprint of this character we're going to go ahead and open that and we're going to go to our event graph and in our event graph, what we want to do is we are going to go ahead and create the blueprints required. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make two custom events. All right. And we're going to go ahead and make the first one here. We're going to want to name them. So we'll do the first one here. And I just want to name this check movement velocity. So we're just going to go right up here and we're going to put in check movement velocity. And then we're going to go ahead and add another custom event and that one will be called follow player now from here we want to also make two timers so let's go ahead and make these two timers we are going to create one timer and we want to do set timer by function name so you want this one set timer by function name and let's go ahead and duplicate that because we're going to need two of them one for each custom event we're going to set these timers. This one is going to be 0.1 and the second one we're going to set at 0.01. And then for the first timer, we're going to go ahead and make that one be the check movement velocity. So you want to just copy this name exactly and go ahead and paste it into this slot. And then we're going to go ahead and we need to do the same for follow player. So we're going to just go ahead and copy this and paste that name as the function name follow player so now we could go ahead and compile this and save so we've got our timers now we want to make sure we're setting these to looping so they can continuously loop these custom events now we're going to go ahead and we are going to go down to the first and we are going to build all right so first we want to put a do once node behind the check movement velocity so we're going to put a do once all right and then after that do once we're going to do try traversal action we want to do try traversal action now for the uh inputs here this is one of the main things that changed from the first tutorial for 5.4 for this we are going to use get traversal check inputs and you want to just put that in here all right this basically replaces the old version. Drag off and put a branch. And if this condition is true, we want to add movement input. All right, and we wanna make sure that the target is self. So if it's true, we wanna add movement input. After this, we wanna put a small delay and we wanna make it one second. So we have a one second delay. After the one second delay, we're gonna just bring this back down and we're going to reset. Now, the thing that's also different is this branch works different here than in the other version. What we're gonna to wanna to do is also come off of this false. And if this is false, we're just gonna go ahead and go to the delay and go ahead and reset the do once node as well. So that way it's fail safe that it's gonna always reset and continuously check this action. Next, we're going to go down 
to our follow player. And under our follow player, we're going to come off of this and we're going to also do a branch and we're just going to leave that condition empty for now. The next thing we're going to do is get player character. So we want to do get player character off of this get player character. We want to get actor location. All right. And with the get actor location, we want to actually duplicate this. So go ahead and make a duplicate of it off of this. We want to get unit direction vector off of either one of these. Let's go ahead and say get unit direction vector. And we want to make sure that the self is on top and the player character is on bottom. Now off of this get player character, we want to also do a get distance to, and I'm going to move this up a little bit. We actually want the player to be the other actor. So let's go ahead and put this here and break this link to self. Now off of here, what we want to do is we can drag each of these to the world direction. And we want to do that as well when we create continue on here. So off of this node, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we're going to add movement input again. So add movement input, and we want to use the same exact directional vector and hook that into there. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to put a greater than node here. And then this we could promote to a variable. I just called this follow player distance. So you could do the same thing. And then after follow player distance, I want to make these variables exposed so that I can adjust them uh, to the amount that I want. Uh, we're going to use the default to be 300 units. And now what we can do is we should be able to plug this all into this condition so that if the distance to the player from this character is greater than 300 unreal units, we will add movement input. All right, so this is all we should need to get the player following us. Let's go ahead and compile and save all this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this character out that I've added, and we're going to replace it with our new sandbox child character. Let's do a file, save all. We're going to go ahead and press play. And you're going to see that the character's backing up to us. And that is because we have to go and fix one more item that I told you to expose earlier in your character. So we're going to go ahead and go to our main sandbox character. And you want to go down to where it says character input state. And you want to uncheck wants to strafe. Compile, save that, go back out. Now we're going to press play again. And you should see your character run towards you. And now your character should be following you. All right. So as you can see, your character should be following you. You've got it. It's done. It works great. And I hope that helped everybody that was trying to do the 5.5 version. I had several people tell me that uh, the coding had changed a little bit. So the nodes that I were telling you to use in the 5.4 were no longer valid. So there you guys go. There you gals go. I hope this helps everybody. And I'll be back with another one. Amp Capo, Black Adonis Games.